I would describe our financial situation as dire right now. That's all we have? 30 bucks? Yeah. We spend our money on things for the house that we don't need, on our kids, on things that they don't need. We make unorthodox purchases, unscheduled purchases, spontaneous purchases. Anything that's on sale, I will buy it. I got a call from these guys. So that one's going to get paid okay. immediately. We pay bills when the debtors call us, and we pay the guy who's called us the most. No, we didn't say that either. My fear is that we'll lose the house. It's very scary for me. One large emergency is going to crush us. My name is Mike. My wife, Becky, and I have two children, Christopher and Alex. We've been married for 13 years. I work at a pharmaceutical company. I am senior account executive for a managed services company. Our combined income is approximately $100,000. We don't typically talk about our finances. We ignore it. Did we not pay these guys last month? Once it gets to the point where calls are coming in on a regular basis, the stress builds up more and more until somebody finally breaks. When do we get paid again? Not this Friday, next Friday. Yeah. We need money for gas. At the end of each paycheck, why are we in a negative? Where are we going wrong? It's absolutely terrifying being under a debt load such as what we've got. If my car was to break down or we need a new roof, something like that would just sink us. We never seem to get out of the spin at all. If we keep going at the rate we're going, it's going to happen again. We've got to do something about it now. I don't want to be where I am right now. I need help. I need help. This month, I'll help this couple move from red to black. I've been solving money problems for over 20 years, tackling everything from high finance to low income. I help people understand money and debt, which is still a huge mystery for most folks. And it's the number one reason couples split up. So now, I'm making house calls. Mike and Becky have never talked about money. They're too busy spending it. Together, they've amassed $56,000 in credit card debt on top of their $190,000 mortgage. As if they weren't in deep enough, they've just taken out their third consolidation loan. Gail Vice Oxley. Pleasure to meet you, Mike. These two need my help. If you don't mind, I'm gonna have a quick look around. Is that Absolutely. Okay? Sure. Nice kitchen. Simple. She's new. Oh, anyway. She's checking us out. I think this one really likes what's going on in the tank. Mm -hmm. Let me take a look upstairs. How uncomfortable is that? I know. What are the boys' rooms? Loads of clothes. The thing I don't see is fancy. I kind of wonder where all the money's going. Here's what I see when I look in at you. I see that you are teetering on the edge. There are no plans for savings. If an emergency were to arise tomorrow, you would be up the creek with no paddle. That should scare the pants off of you. It does, absolutely. I see you addicted to credit. It's created a reliance on money you haven't yet earned. And I also see two people who are remarkably self-indulgent. Yeah. yeah. You guys spend over $100 a month tanning. Seems that. You are spending more money than you make. You know that? You're aware of how much more you're spending than you make? I'm afraid to know. You're also remarkably disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> I That's an understatement, yeah. Bills don't get paid on time? No. No wonder the bills aren't getting paid. They're shopaholics. I've reviewed six months of their finances and discovered that they're spending twice as much as they think. When you did your budget, you thought you were spending about $6,400 a month. You were actually spending $11,000 a month. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a problem. If you multiply that times 12, that's a lot, a lot of money. <laughs> You guys actually get the prize for the biggest shoppers ever, in all time, everywhere, in all eternity. In six months, you made 70 trips to a discount department store. In six months, you made 71 trips to restaurants. 
You made 71 trips to the grocery store. You shop online to the tune of $100 a month. Yeah, go ahead, call me a liar. <laughs> Restaurants, $367 a month. If you stay on this track, in five years, you'll be $600,000 in debt. That is unbelievable. How can somebody get into debt that much? Like, can you imagine? That's like, that, that amount of money is more than my house. That amount of money is more than my house and my two cars and everything put together. Wanna go there? No. 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 Sure? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I need your commitment. I need you to tell me that you're prepared to do whatever I'm asking you to do to get you back on track. I need your promise. Without hesitation, oh. yeah. You have my promise. The very next thing I need are all your credit cards and all your debit cards. Right now, go get them. All the debit ones as well, right? Coming up, can Mike and Becky get over their addiction to credit? So did you see what came in the mail today? So should we tell Gail about this? Okay. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Do the chicken fingers come with French fries? Mike and Becky are the ultimate consumers, hooked on spending money they haven't yet earned. Reckless, frequent shopping combined with an indulgent lifestyle have put them almost a quarter of a million dollars in debt. They've been relying heavily on credit until now. It's time to live by my rules. For the next month, this couple will learn to live on a strict cash budget. No more credit cards. They'll complete weekly challenges to tackle their money and relationship issues. And if they're willing to change, I'll reward them with thousands of dollars. No changes, no money. Since a big part of your problem comes from the fact that you have no self-control, your credit cards are... Toast! Stand back, they're gonna blow. <laughs> oh, when I go to work tomorrow, I have nothing. This is like the security blanket's gone. Mike and Becky have lived on credit for far too long. I've given them a balanced budget, and the cash I've taken from the bank is all they'll have to live on till the end of the month. You don't have any credit cards anymore. <laughs> and I've <laughs> stolen your debit cards. What are you gonna spend? Nothing. Cash. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you the responsibility of putting the cash you've taken out of the bank into the jars. What these jars represent is your variable spending. You have fixed expenses and you have variable expenses. Your fixed expenses are things like your mortgage. Your variable expenses, as we have seen, are completely out of control. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim back nice and tight, cutting your variable expenses by 65%. <laughs> okay. They're going from spending $8,400 a month in variable expenses to just under $3,000. And from now on, I want them to stock away $200 a month in savings. And because you're dealing with the real stuff, you will run into a problem if you do not write it down. So, here I have for you your handy dandy budgie binder. And what this proves is that while you may be a techie, high tech isn't better. Everything you spend in each of these categories that I have given you, you have to write in the budget binder. Okay. Write it down. Thank you. Stay on budget. Okay. Spend less. <laughs> and we'll be all happy campers. We certainly need the slap in the face. You know, we're not getting it from friends and family because we don't typically tell them about this sort of stuff. So, Mike and Becky, we are here because you seem to have a fairly well stocked cooking shelf, yes. and this is important okay. because over the next week, you are allowed to go shopping once. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that means you have to figure out what the meals are gonna be and you have to go to the cupboards and figure out what's in them and figure out what you need. And how will I know if you've gone shopping once? One receipt. The receipts. <laughs> They're used to shopping three times a day. I have to wonder if they're gonna be able to pull this off. Actually planning the entire shopping for an entire week is um, a first for me. I think it'll be a real test of character for us to see if we can actually go out and do it. So, 
We're supposed to take inventory of all the cupboards. Do you want veggies or fruit? If I can get some fruit, yes. Yeah, some fruit? oranges and some apples would be perfect. Okay. Did you want to make the spinach lasagna? Yes, I do. And I'm going to do that on Saturday just because it's easier. Okay, what about the fridge? We are out of milk and we go through milk, so I put down eight bags. Okay. What do we have to spend on groceries? 20, 60, 80, 100, 150. 150 bucks. I'm gonna bring a calculator. Oh, the jars are horrible. I hate them. It just reminds me that I only have so much money to spend. We need milk. Yeah. Two. Two whole bags. bags. So 687 times two. What's 687? The cheese? Juices were 96 cents. Buck 67. Green beans, green beans. 87 cents times three. So what do we got? Do we have a subtotal? Have a great day. You too. How was your week? It was hard. Yeah. It was rough, I have to admit. We thought it was going to be really easy. Yes. But towards the end of the week, it got harder and harder. Saturday comes along, and you're going, uh, something's missing here. I mean, it's a routine going out on Saturday or Sunday and doing it's some shopping. a habit. Absolutely. Yes. It's a bad habit. Very bad. Because what you've done is you've taken shopping and turned it into a sport. <laughs> yes. You have to think about this for your boys as well. If every time you go shopping and you come out with stuff, they're learning that you're going to a store to come out with stuff. Yeah. So maybe what you have to do is think about other things. What other things are there that make life rich? When you spend the money, what do you feel? Do you get a rush? I feel good. So you have to figure out what the motivation is, why you feel the way you do, and why that particular activity fills the hole. If you don't figure this out, yeah. you never actually solve the problem. I love shopping. I think the thing is, is it takes me away from here to be by myself. So maybe I actually need alone time, not necessarily shopping, but doing something else for me. Aha, she's starting to get it. Shopping as entertainment is an expensive hobby and one that could land them even deeper in the hole. Because you have some issues around spending, around not communicating about money, this week's challenge is gonna sort of hit them all at once. <laughs> Mike. Your job this week will be to create bag lunches for each day that you go to work, for both you and Becky. And then you're gonna jump in your car and drive your bag lunch over to Becky. And you're gonna find a quiet place to sit and talk. Becky, you won't be tempted to go shopping with the girls because your loving husband's showing up with some questions that you are going to work through over a week's worth of lunches together. This whole process so far, Becky and I have communicated more about our finances. We've had to sit down. There's a lot more exposure to each other. This week's challenge is just gonna expand on that. Coming up, Mike and Becky finally start talking about money. But are they on the same page? So I say we set a limit. 50? I think that's too low. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Mike and Becky are now living on a strict cash budget. I spent 20 bucks on gas. Their uncontrolled day-to-day -day spending has landed them $56,000 in credit card debt. Please pay the balance for it immediately to avoid further collection action. I think should I give them a call? My challenge for this week forces them to plan for the future and set a better example for their kids. Succeed and they can earn $5,000. It's me. I'm just a couple of minutes away. I'll meet you up front. I think it'll be nice to actually spend some time with Michael. You ready for this? It'll be nice to actually talk about it instead of one, ignoring it, and two, fighting about it. Yeah. Number one, what do you want for your future? And do you have similar pictures or are they completely different? I want the house paid off. I want to make sure that the kids' education is paid off and that they don't adopt our debt. And what about you? I just, uh, I want happiness, really. I want to be able to plan for purchase and not do the buy now, pay later scenario that we always do. Yep. So, it sounds like your pictures kind of jive with my pictures. Number two is, what do you want for your boys and what do you want to teach them about money? That's an important question, because yeah. the past all we've done is we've Get we give them what they want. I'd like to get them onto a fixed allowance system. I'd like to, you know, explain a little bit more about the jar system. Last night you said that you don't want to do the jars. I don't want them to be all hoarding their money, and I don't want them to be all spending their money. 
So Mike and Becky, tell me how your week went. In our personal goals, yes, there were differences. There were certainly some overlapping points. Right. I saw my future not, I, I hate to say it, not as material, but I wanted to be happy and I wanted to be financially comfortable. And Becky saw things as, I want to make sure that I've got a house, you know, near my parents with a pool and, <laughs> and, and so on. Right, and you had never talked about this before? Not really dug to that depth. What did you think of the whole exercise? I actually liked answering these questions. It really made me think about what I wasn't thinking about before. I think you've taken a great step doing what you've done here because you've actually started thinking about it. Because it's hard. Fundamentally, what I'm asking you to do is change your behavior. You guys, I believe, have your day-to-day -day stuff in hand. I have come up with a very creative challenge for you. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. I'm scared. Christmas is just around the corner, and special events like this have a way of blowing your budget right out of the water. More than ever, Mike and Becky need to get creative and stay out of the mall. Because I would never strain your budget, knowing just how tight it is. I have for you here a new jar. <laughs> just we don't need, need any more jars. jars. <laughs> but this one has $200 in it. I like I that. that. <laughs> I'm happy with those type of jars. Using this $200, you have to make presents for each other and for the grandparents. Okay. It doesn't have to be the same thing. It doesn't have to be $200 worth of sugar cookies. <laughs> okay? Use your skills to do something creative. Hey. Need to get a stack of CDs. Stack of CDs? Yeah. 50? Yeah, okay. The, the $200 Christmas challenge begins with a trip to the computer store. I gotta admit, this is a lot harder than I expected it was going to be. We're making a lot of stuff. I'm doing some cooking. We're making two baskets. The sweet basket, which is jams and jellies and some CDs of sweet Christmassy music. I am making Christmas ornaments from beads. The challenge this week has been very hard, mostly because of time. Coming home and getting the kids to do their homework and then sitting down, doing crafts. Do we know which one's the salt? Alex? Which one's the sugar? Salt. Bitter. Tastes bitter, Alex? <laughs> I'll keep this still. <coughs> Go, push, push. Grass. Ow, Alex. Stop, stop. <laughs> oh, dude. Where did you cough? In your hand. OK, we'll just make this our own. Coming up, will Mike and Becky be able to stay on budget? Who are you going to give these presents to? You don't know yet and teach their kids that nice gifts don't always come from a store. Before I met them, Mike and Becky shopped an average of three times a day. They spent shamelessly paying no attention to the bottom line. Let's see how they did on the $200 Christmas challenge. So Mike and Becky, I want to hear all about your week and particularly about your challenge. We did the best that we could and we made as much as we could. Timing was an issue for you. It was a very, big issue, <laughs> a very big issue, very big issue as working parents coming home and having to cook and jar and make this and make that. Did everybody like them? They loved them. Yeah, I it mean, was it quite was funny because we do a gift exchange thing and you draw a name and then somebody picks this one and they can steal that one and our gifts were the ones that were being stolen from each other. <laughs> yeah. Was this better than shopping? Um, I can say that it was much better than Christmas shopping because the malls out there are crazy. So all in all, it was a, just a resounding success. Yes, it was. It was a real positive It was, it was fun. We had a good yes. time. When I got here, you guys were headed to about $600,000 worth of debt. Mm -hmm. But now things have changed. You've stemmed the $3,600 a month overflow in your budget, and you're actually saving $2,400 a year. If you stick that $2,400 a year in an RSP at 5%, and then you reinvest your tax refund, you'll have a quarter of a million dollars by the time you get ready to sit in your rocker. Woo! Okay, let's go. Uh, okay, let's go. Happy? Yes, yeah, very. When I went to go get the money for the jars this morning, yes. I looked at my bank statement, I went, we have money. <laughs> Where did all this money come from? There's so it's much safety. Growing. There's like this comfort that you're not in the negatives. You're you know, you still have to work on finding things to substitute for. Oh, I do. Me time, Becky yeah, I time. Do. I do. We had to change our lifestyle, and it was a sudden, dramatic, drastic change in, in our spending habits, and that got frustrating at times. You've worked really hard this month, so I have something for you. I have. That's not right. 
Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. $5,000. Wow. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. The biggest lesson that I learned was when the right time to spend money is. Now we talk about our spending, we talk about our planning, we talk about our finances a lot more, and for me it's made the biggest difference. I'm impressed with Mike and Becky's progress. They went from shopping 21 times a week to shopping only once. Now they're talking about money and their financial goals. But most remarkably, they stuck to a dramatically reduced budget even through an event like Christmas. That deserves a special nod. When you work as hard as you do, you deserve a little bit extra. I know the two of you like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I have virtually stopped your eat out budget. Yes. So I am giving you the opportunity to go to a wonderful restaurant for dinner. You're also going to go away for the weekend by yourselves and have a romantic weekend away in a lovely hotel. Enjoy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I really deserve it. You have been such, such good sports. They have you. been such good sports.